Okay, so Leslie, let's talk about your new novel, about chocolate. So, Cioccolato Amaro. Amaro, in English, uh, bitter chocolate. Bitter chocolate. chocolate. And the title refers to the color of skin Mm -hmm. of the lead um, heroine in the novel. And I went out with a Haitian man for quite a long time, about six or seven years ago, and was very interested in Haiti and the role of skin color in Haitian society. And I met someone who had been a restavec, which is somebody who's sort of a half-servant, half a family member, and this particular person had married an Englishman and moved to the UK. And I remember starting to think how interesting that must have been to have come from a society like Haiti to um, the United Kingdom and to come, you know, with a man to try and find a relationship to build a family and so on. So I started to build a story around essentially these two characters. Um, And then the third English girl was somebody who had materially everything but actually had no love. And so the uh, the idea of writing a story about these two girls who had nothing and managed to build a new life and this girl who had everything and still hadn't found uh, a lasting relationship, that was the inspiration of this. And you are always interested in uh, women relation with love in all of your novels, yes. sex, love, yes. and relation with men. Do you find it difficult today to find a man? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I think that the role of women, the kind of culture of being a woman is changing. I mean, the part of the world that I come from, West Africa, is changing very, very rapidly. So I think both for men and for women, there's a real difficulty around how to be with one another because the traditional roles have essentially fallen apart. And so the idea of having a woman who can earn her own living, who doesn't need to get married for security or financial security, that changes the way men and women relate to one another. And I think, you know, our generation is is a real product of that. Both men and women really struggle in terms of how to be with one another. So you think it's more difficult than in the past? I think so, yes. And I mean, curiously, the more choices you have, and the more freedom you have as a result of those choices. For a lot of my female friends, the more difficult it is to find both a man who can accept those changes, but actually the the women can find men, you know, who are still interesting, who are still relevant somehow to their lives. So it's it's a tough time, I think, to be a woman. Curiously, at the time that you have the most choices, yeah. What do you think of the Italian cover up of our book? I love it. <laughs> I have to say, I absolutely love it. I love it. It's, it's both classy and it's sensual. It's sexy without being trashy, which is always a very fine line, I think, in particularly in the UK publishing, because these types of novels tend to be quite blockbustery. It's a little bit like the Jackie Collins, and this is very, very different. So I'm very, very happy with it. Yes, because I think that you write sexy novels but never trashy novels. Thank you. <laughs> very classy. I this is so. the thing. And you are really a storyteller. Yes. Yeah. When did you realize that you were really a storyteller? That well, you wanted to tell a story, to write a story? I mean, I come from a culture that, you know, we have oral history, so my Ghanaian culture is not about writing, it's about storytelling. So there's kind of, you know, centuries behind me in a way of, you know, grandmothers passing on stories to their, you know, grandchildren, to their mothers, to their daughters, and so on. So that's one aspect. But also I went to work in South Africa as an architect in between 92 and 94. And it was a very interesting time when Mandela had come out of prison, but South Africa wasn't yet independent. And everyone kept talking about the political changes that were taking place in South Africa. But I thought the emotional changes in people were much more interesting. And as an architect, it was very difficult to talk about those sorts of things. And sort of looking back at my own family, you know, my mother was European, she'd come to Africa, married an African. In a way, she had tried to write history through her own body somehow. And I was interested in exploring that, this aspect of love and romance and sex between people who normally might never have met. So that was the impetus, really, for starting this story. And it just kind of grew. And I remember that in architecture, because I was a lecturer in architecture, you would always be talking to 10 or 15 people. And I kept thinking, well, what kind of novel could I write that would talk to 50,000 people, not just to five people who happen to share your point of view? So for me, the blockbuster was an interesting genre, just because it's not the kind of genre that you normally tell these sorts of stories in. 
I think that's sort of what started it, yeah. And you like it. And, now it. <laughs> and you are not anymore an architect. I mean, you, now you decide you are a writer full time. Yeah, I think it's very difficult to do both because architecture really occupies a different side of your brain. And for a couple of years, I tried to do a little bit of both, do a little bit of writing and then do a bit of architecture. And it doesn't really work. And, I mean, it's interesting. The first novel, everyone says, is the most difficult. And for me, curiously, that was the easiest because I had a quite a clear idea of a story that I wanted to tell. But by the time the second and the third novel came out, I realized, you know, this is a proper profession. You have to really pay attention to this and that you have to read your competitors. You, you have to take it more seriously somehow. So now I really focus on writing. Yeah. And which kind of novels do you like? It's funny, I don't read generally the kind of fiction that I write. So my favorite authors tend to be what in English we would call post-colonial writers. So South African writers, Indian writers, Malaysians. I have quite wide reading tastes. Um, and I have to confess that I haven't read a blockbuster for a long time. 